Thank you. 
<laughs> that was fun. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite enjoying that. <laughs> um, one thing that I guess I wanted to ask you about is, is I guess, how you conceptually approach, like, processing organic sounds. So in this case, mm. there's quite literal organic materials there, but also your voice. Like, there's kind of a parallel of, I mean, I don't know what kind of sound the, the dirt makes or whatever, but, like, how do you approach <laughs> yeah, yeah. processing like organic sounds, I guess is I can. Um, well, that's a yeah, a good a good question to start with, probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is quite a new experiment that I've been something that I'm developing um, for Adam Swain for a commission from Adam Swain for a, a piece for piano and multimedia, um, and I've basically got this kind of breadboard here, and I'm using the soil um, as a variable variable resistor in the circuits um, so the sounds that it actually makes on its own are maybe not that interesting but it but the fact that it's very unstable is interesting so you can't really can't control it like if you start to con try and control it then <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's 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 not gonna behave at all hmm. so so it's trying to embrace the unpredictability of it i suppose so um in my patch um i'm tr i'm at once like trying to make the sounds more more kind of interesting um but also trying to kind of account for any <laughs> <laughs> technical things like it might suddenly go really loud or, yeah, yeah so i've got kind of protections in place for that um mm. but i've tried lots of different like analog processing and ended up with a digital pro processing which i'm not sure i'm happy with as an end point yeah. but aside from like investing in loads of really expensive <laughs> pedals like granulation pedals and mm. stuff um it was the best way to test out mm. what those kinds of processes would do so i've got some different granulators um and like different harmonic filtering that is kind of randomized and and i think i, I wanted the soil to sound like it was alive because yeah. it is it's got so many tiny things in it but mm. um so I kind of like the idea that you can hear all the tiny um, microorganisms hmm. moving around, although actually what you're listening to is how conductive yeah, yeah. it is. <laughs> I mean, which has an impact, because I guess yeah. like, as things move around or, or whatever is in there does its thing, like this will affect, yeah. um, I guess, the voltage that's coming out and, and subsequently for the, the rest of your system. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting because there's almost like a contrast there between like uh, the lack of control in, in sort of the earth or dirt. What, what do you call it? Dirt? It's soil. Soil. That's this soil, word. by the way, comes from a very specific tree in okay. Alexandra Park in Manchester that right. sadly fell down. Oh, right. Um, it's one of the lime trees in the avenue. Okay. People that know that park. Right. <laughs> um, so I wanted to take something from there. Yeah, yeah. Because um, they're really old trees, like over a hundred years old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they've been falling down because the the ground's got really waterlogged. Mm. So yeah, I'm think thinking about memorial. Um, yeah, yeah. Through this other piece that I'm making, and this has become a kind of improvising setup as well, I suppose, which is a nice way to in investigate. Yeah, and yeah. Experiment with. And I, I, to kind of chase that tangent a bit, like mm. what came first, the 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 felling of the tree, um, or your desire to work with soil? Oh, actually, the the soil, um, yeah, because I've been working on this project, um, running running a project called Below Ground, um, over the last year, which is a collaborative project working with interdisciplinary um specialists in subterranean things right okay <laughs> so that's included like horticulturalists ecologists uh, geographers um and it's been kind of exploring what kind of sounds movements multimedia ideas could arise from a kind of study of underground things hmm. um and david birchall who's one of the people who's been working on that project um was the kind of the person that brought some soil into one of the sessions um, and we had that on sitting on a loudspeaker and 
um, a transducer microphone on my neck. We right. were okay. making the soil bounce. Yeah, yeah. And so that was a kind of a visual thing, mm -hmm. or kind of visualising sound in a way. Um, so the soil kind of comes out of that project. Interesting, okay. Um, and then when Adam approached me to write this multimedia piece for piano, the, the starting point was memorial. Right, okay. And I thought, oh, this is... I really want to connect with these these yeah, things. Yeah. It's, it feels right to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's something that I guess, like, humans, I guess for as long as humans have been humaning, mm. you know, we <laughs> often put, you know, our dead in the ground. Like, it's like a, yeah. like a, a very exactly. common thing across a lot of different cultures. Um, where, I mean, I don't know enough about why that's across so many cultures, yeah. why that's the case, but um, it's kind of interesting that, like, that the earth is sort of, like, a place for memory or a place mm. where like time stops yeah it often is opposite the case there's so much stuff down there but the way that like mm. as humans we interface with earth is often that way definitely and then there's also the thing about um soil being so vital to us but we take mm. it really for granted but soil can die <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um so there's there's something there as well about like um yeah definitely like thinking about i don't know just the whole sort of cycle of everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah but too like too big to say in words almost yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an area rich with uh surface area for like metaphor and meaning mm. you know like just memory death soil yeah. ground you know above below like yeah. there's a lot of uh yeah, yeah. it's very charged as, as a yeah definitely as a kind of a vector for creativity and stuff um a sort of de tangent, like I guess what what I was gonna ask a, a while ago was this idea of like you using soil here and it's very uh, unpredictable and it's mm. one of the inputs into your process here, and the other input to your process, unless there is other stuff going on, is your voice, which yeah. is almost on the opposite end of that. Where it's it's, I mean, there's processes <laughs> that are uncontrollable, but you cannot you're quite literally it's you in control there, mm. like the are they doing two completely separate like paths in your instrument here and or how do you relate to having like a fully controlled input and a fully not fully uncontrolled but like a very uh random-esque input into your intro yeah. instrument interesting well i mean obviously yeah the voice can respond to any mm. sound and situation it's a much more flexible instrument than the, yeah. than the soil, <laughs> as I have the soil currently set up that yeah, could be yeah. made more more flexible. Um, and I suppose, like just when we were pl just playing just just then, because I haven't really combined my voice with the mm. soil before okay. just then. <laughs> right, right. That was like a new a new thing to try. Um, but it's yeah, it's thinking about the, those like textures and um, combining and layering these these textures and and sort of sustained sounds in the voice and the kind of processing of um I've got a vocal processor here which is which I can use to transpose sounds um and I got quite interested there in the kind of combining the different bass sound mm. qualities and the kind of um like granular or like kind of quite like rough sort of sound qualities I suppose mm. yeah yeah um, but yeah, there's so much that the voice can do. I, like a lot of the time, I I actually just feel a bit stuck because I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, you have lots of ideas, but like, what is the what's the best one to pair here with the thing? So because I could do anything. Yeah, yeah. Do you think I that's could... an attraction? So for example, like I've played a lot of piano, I played a lot of keyboard, and there's mm. a there's a lot of muscle memory that becomes um, mechanical, and uh, but with these instruments, there's a lot of ways, like for the guitar, you can change the tuning. Uh, mm. with key, you know, there, there, there's ways that you can still use some of the muscle memory, but decouple it from the sounding result. Yeah. Whereas with the voice, that's a lot less the case. Mm. I mean, I, I guess you can have techniques and implements and stuff, but like, is that something that you then, I guess, really seek out as a, in your practice as a vocalist? Is this um, having something that either interferes with your intention and result or just gives a different sounding result as perhaps as like a feedback um mechanism or something like yeah i mean i was quite enjoying just then that i wired up my looper and my um voice transformer in a different order to what i'm used to so 
actually some of the results were not quite what I expected. Right, okay. So, oh, okay. Because <laughs> <It's> the, <laughs> they, they were in the different order. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, like it, there's, a, there's a way of exploring new areas, definitely, hmm. when, you, when you kind of, you don't exactly know what the result would be. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm interested in like decoupling as a thing when I'm, when I'm writing as a composer, like for string instruments and um, wind instruments as well. Definitely, it's something that I that I do but it's yeah it's a bit harder for the voice although some composers have written it yeah, for yeah, me yeah like, I was gonna ask like it, yeah like, so I guess with that you do have some experience with that like parametric mm. voice yeah yeah stuff. yeah Matthew Sargent wrote me a piece that yeah. had um a lot of kind of uh, vowels decoupled from consonants um and then the kind of independent sort of opening closing of the mouth or like uh, relaxing of um, the vocal apparatus yeah, so like yeah. towards a vocal fry uh, gradually over a kind of a minute um, so yeah there's lots of these yeah, things yeah. that are possible how, how do you I, I mean we're getting super tangent <laughs> on it but like I'm because yeah. it's, it's as a well, as an instrument because I'm thinking also like people like Aaron Cassidy who also has a lot of this like very mm, parametric stuff yeah. whereas it's like it's very alien to think of a, a finger as a separate or bowing direction and speed and orientation as mm. separate but it's like I think it's more conceptually doable than with the voice because we we're so like speaking all the time mm -hmm. all of these things are so tightly coupled that it, it like as a performer how like how did you approach decoupling that like you know well that was that was a really interesting process for that particular piece um um because I literally just separated out the elements and I think that's what a lot of other yeah, yeah. performers have done like so I think um so yeah, Aaron Cassidy's piece, I spat purple's yeah. laugh of beautiful lips, I think okay. it's called. <laughs> um, um, I know Jeffrey Gavitt's written about the kind of decoupling of, of these of these elements mm. in the voice and and like how you can sort of learn them separately and then try to pile them up together. And that's yeah. definitely the approach that I've taken, like to try and learn each one. And but it's the it's the jumping off. Yeah, yeah, at yeah. the end of it that I absolutely love like I really yeah. enjoy it because it's a kind of it's a real kind of like brain twister <laughs> mm. yeah I would think is like it's it's the thing that we use the most as humans is is our voice like to mm. communicate to sing to like like it's it's in constant exactly. use and in a very coupled yeah. and organized manner that that yeah and but it's such a like a an enormous resource of sounds though which which becomes a bit overwhelming sometimes i think because you you know you can you can imitate <laughs> mm. a lot of other things you can you know there's just so many possibilities when you especially when you think about using text um so i think like in an improvising situation it's good to have things to bounce off or things to kind of pair with in terms of like um, finding a focus, hmm. maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, because it, it quite literally, like, the, the sounds that can come out of your mouth can be, like, every Shakespeare sonnet. Like, it's literally all <laughs> languages yeah, exactly. on the table, you yeah. know, which is, like, that can be a bit overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so limiting it just a bit from that is probably yeah. quite useful. I, I, yeah, because there's those, like, those vocal apparatus machines where you can, like, move things and it does, like, you know, like, those <laughs> kind of very coarse things. I was just, I don't know if I've ever seen one of those used in, um, like, a musical context or pushing it, like, like sending a lot of air, but then, the, like, c controlling the, the parameters of that recreation of it in a, in a mm. really extreme way that would, may even be dangerous for certain things, you know, like, moving more air than is possible and all that probably sound kind of interesting. Yeah, probably would. <laughs> <laughs> probably a bit too dangerous for <laughs> the vanilla voice. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> cool. Shall we make some more sound? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I might just um, change some settings. <laughs>
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.